My friends, like, where are you watching from today? Let me know in the comments. Today, I'm giving you five Premiere Pro time-lapse tips that I use to make my edits more interesting. Let's begin. So I moderate the time-lapse subreddit, which is quite a large community of people submitting time-lapse content pretty much every single day. Dozens of clips get posted. And out of all these clips, uh, oftentimes when I watch them, my heart breaks and I start crying and I'm deeply emotional because they have a lot of movement to them. Uh, I, this is one of the tips I always share, like, you know, get a solid tripod, make sure your time-lapse setup is sturdy so you don't get any movement because that pulls the viewer out of that cinematic experience you're trying to give them as a creator. But sometimes, you know, you just get movement in there. Now, what's the best way to fix it? Well, the easiest way to fix it is the warp stabilizer. I know. Most of us know the warp stabilizer from stabilizing hyperlapse clips that, you know, I've got a whole playlist about that, but it also works to really lock off your shot, call it tripod mode or lockdown mode or whatever you want to call it. Drag your warp stabilizer effect on your clip in your timeline. Go to the effects control tab, set it to no motion instead of smooth motion and bada bing bada boom, you have no motion. What will be gone? Now that your shot is locked off, it can get a bit boring. If your shots are all lined up and they're just static shots, if you don't have a motion control device to add a little bit of motion yourself, you can push in or pull out or sideways move your shots in post. We have large resolution photos that we're working with, so let's use that resolution. If you're in a 4K timeline and you've got 6K footage, you can scale out quite a lot, still retain your full resolution and then kind of move your footage around. Once again, you're going to your effect controls tab with your clip selected in the timeline and then you're going to go check out your position or your scale parameters. Go to the first frame of your clip, enable the chrono icon to enable keyframes, then go to the last frame of your clip and add another keyframe using this little diamond button. And then you can change your parameters like position or scale or rotation even to kind of push in or pull out or move sideways to add a little bit of interest to your shot to keep it a little bit dynamic. And I often use this to, to guide the viewer's eye towards a specific uh, point or a cloud or a, a certain movement in the time-lapse clip. So that used keyframes, I use keyframes all the time. The next one also uses keyframes, but in a different sense. But before that, a word from the sponsor of today's video, which is you potentially. So I assume, or I hope you know, that I've created the ultimate time-lapse course, which is a mega online video course, all about time-lapse, hyperlapse, astrophotography, almost a hundred videos in there, hours and hours of content, LR time-lapse, discount codes, Lightroom presets, video, lots, a exclusive community forum, all this stuff is included. Now from the ultimate time-lapse course, I've collected the basics of time-lapse and I've created a new course called time-lapse for beginners which you can check out down below it costs 97 USD it comes with all these things as well including the ultimate time-lapse guide which is an ebook that talks about hyperlapse and astro and all those things it's got the community forum exclusively for students where you can connect and ask me questions directly etc and if you use the code that you see on screen you get an extra ten dollars off your purchase which is a pretty darn good deal if you ask me so if you want to improve your time-lapse skills check it out down below and if you have any questions let me know as well now up next my favorite type of transition it's speed ramping speed ramping is manipulating your speed of your clip it works really well if you speed up the start and the end of your time lapse clip and here's how you do that let's work with a couple of sideways hyperlapses in your timeline select one of these clips and then make sure that you can see your time keyframes in the timeline up next create two keyframes in that clip and then to the left and to the right that line you're going to drag that up which increases the speed which shortens the clip i hope that makes sense then using these handles, you're going to drag them sideways so you get a bit of a ramp, but that is a linear ramp, which can be quite harsh. So you're going to use that little tool in the middle there to smooth that ramp out, create a bit of a Bezier curve, as we call it. And that allows you to create these really smooth, organic, fluid speed ramps, which is a great way to transition from one movement into the next movement. Then another tip that I'm going to add on top of the previous one, directional blur can really elevate that sensation of movement and time speeding up. And of course, you are going to use keyframes here as well. What a surprise. So drag that effect onto your clip, enable keyframes using the chrono icon and make sure your direction is set correctly to sideways directional blur. Enable the keyframes and up the strength for the effect where you want it to be, which is when you're moving fast and lower that down to where you don't want it to be. Uh, visible at all that effect. If you haven't mastered keyframes by now, I hope at least this is giving you a little bit of a hands-on experience as to how keyframes work in Premiere Pro. They're super powerful and maybe I'll make a different video about that uh, because yeah, it's just super useful. Anyways, on to the next effect which 
If you watch all of my videos, you would have seen this effect. This is animated masking. This is really fun when you, for example, want to slide a building into a shot uh, from one shot to the next or whatever. I use this in the analog photo Instagram Reels tutorial that a lot of people have been watching because it's just a trending trend. That makes sense, right? Trends, trend. Anyways, you're going to use the pen tool to create a mask around a object in your clip. And then you're going to animate once again using keyframes the position or scale parameters of your clip to animate the whole thing and then you can reveal the rest of your time-lapse clip. It doesn't have to be time-lapse by the way but this is a time-lapse channel and so I'm mostly talking about time-lapse here in this tutorial. And there were five quick tips on how I use a couple of edits and transitions and effects in Premiere Pro to elevate my time-lapse game. If you want to elevate your time-lapse game you know where to find my courses. There's some free books but I really want you to check out time-lapse for beginners which is a super, super valuable course. Use that discount code, get $10 off, and I will see you on the private members only forum where you can ask me any time-lapse related questions you have. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any video requests, please drop it in the comments. And yeah, just drop any comment really. It helps with engagement and it helps the channel grow and it helps me make more free educational content for you. Thanks for tuning in. See you on the next one. May your skies be filled with fluffy clouds like this one. How cute is this little cloud? I call him Claude, French, French name for Claude. Claude? 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 Okay, bye-bye.